Welcome to the deep dive. Ever wondered what truly goes into, you know, building something right from the start? Mm -hmm. Today, we're sort of peeling back the layers of those initial steps, the ones you don't always see. Yeah, the groundwork. Exactly. We've got this document, siteworkoperations.pdf, and our mission really is to dig into the details of prepping a construction site. It's more than just moving dirt around. Way more, from clearing the land to uh, getting ready for the foundation. We think there's some surprising stuff in here, even in what seem like basic steps. Absolutely. And what's fascinating, I think, is how these first actions, you know, before any real building materials even show up, they're so fundamental. Right. It's not just tidying up. It's actually setting the conditions for the whole project's success and, like, how long the building will last. Like prepping a canvas, you said, before we started. Kind of, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't paint on a dirty or bumpy surface, right? No. Same idea here, just a lot bigger scale. Okay, let's unpack that canvas prep then. Starting with site clearing, our source has a figure showing a typical site beforehand, mm -hmm. and it lists six key steps to get it construction ready. Removing trees, bushes, the obvious stuff. Right. But then it mentions grubbing out the roots. Why is that specifically so important? It's not just about looks, is it? No, not at all. Leaving roots, that can cause real headaches later. Oh, so. Well, as they rot, they leave gaps, voids in the soil. That can mean the foundation settles unevenly. Ah, okay. Plus, some roots can actually regrow and maybe damage pipes or utilities you put in later. So yeah, it's about creating a stable, predictable base. Makes sense. And the other steps, getting rid of old structures, clearing junk, doing a rough level, make sure water drains away, it all adds up to that clean, stable starting point. So choosing the right piece of land in the first place, that sounds even more crucial now. Oh, definitely. Our source lists uh, six factors for selecting a site. Things like soil bearing capacity, how much weight it can take. Yep, critical. Proper drainage, easy access for trucks, and, well, people, eventually. Mm -hmm. The actual shape of the land, the topography, environmental factors, local rules, it's quite a list. It is. It's way more strategic than just finding an empty plot. Is there one factor people sometimes maybe overlook, something that could really bite them later? That's a good question. I think while people focus on soil strength and drainage, sometimes the site's uh, slope, the topography, and how easy it is to get to the site can be underestimated. A steep slope might mean huge earth-moving costs. Yeah, I can see that. And bad access. That's a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Deliveries get delayed. Costs go up. Not always obvious at first glance. Okay, so you've picked your spot. It's cleared. Now for the digging. The foundation trenches. The exciting part. Well, for some of us. Our source shows one being dug out. And it gives six steps for after you've marked the outline. Right, once you know where to dig. It says digging to the right depth and width, making sure the sides don't cave in, maybe using shoring, like temporary walls. Exactly, temporary supports if the soil's loose or the trench is deep. Getting rid of the excavated soil, making sure the bottom's perfectly level. Crucial step. Checking the measurements against the plans constantly. Yeah. And then prepping the base for the actual foundation material. It's... uh. Definitely more than just digging a ditch. It really is. And our source adds another twist, finding solid rock just two meters down. Ah, yes. What happens then? Well, that complicates things. You'd remove the topsoil first, the softer stuff. But if your foundation needs to go deeper than that rock... You hit a wall, basically. Pretty much. You'll need special gear, like breakers, yep. to get through that rock. Adds time, adds cost. Okay, but how do you even know where to start digging that trench? The layout. Precisely. The setting out. Figure two in our source shows this. It labels three things. I is a profile board. Mm -hmm. Visual markers at the corners. I are pegs holding those boards up. Yep. And third is the batter board string or building line. That's the string stretched between the boards, right? Yep. Showing the exact edge. That's it. Those simple things, bits of wood, string, create this temporary 3D guide for the whole building. A blueprint on the ground. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And any mistakes here, they just get bigger as you go up. So you need the right tools to get it spot on. The source mentions a tape measure, obviously, a builder square or set square for the right angles. The center for those corners. And a spirit level to make sure everything's flat and vertical. You really can't just guess this stuff. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Precision is key in construction. Small errors down low can cause big structural problems up top. Walls not lining up, 
roof issues. Speaking of perfect angles, let's talk about the 3.4.5 rule, that classic geometry trick. Ah, uh, yes, Pythagoras in action. So if one side of your triangle, the three-foot side, is, say, 6,000 millimeters, okay, then the four side should be 8,000 millimeters, and the diagonal, the five side, the hypotenuse must be 10,000 millimeters. Get those measurements right, and you have a perfect 90-degree angle. Yep. And the source lists the first six steps for using this on site marking a baseline, measuring out the three and four lengths, adjusting things until that diagonal five foot length is exact. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Such a simple math principle, mm -hmm. still so vital. It really is. Been used forever, basically. Because it works <laughs> and it's reliable. Even with fancy lasers today, it's still a great way to double check things quickly. Now, back on that layout diagram, it mentions measurements D and E. If those are the trench width, mm -hmm. and the source somewhere else says 600 millimeters for the trench, then D and E would both be 600 millimeter, just keeping it consistent. That sounds right. Maintaining that consistent width is really important. Why exactly? It relates directly to how the foundation spreads the building's load. Generally, a wider base spreads the weight better. If the width varies... You get weak spots. You could, yes. It could compromise the whole foundation's strength. Okay, right. So trenches are dug, but a building site is chaos. Materials everywhere. People, machines. It can be, if it's not organized. Our source actually shows a basic site layout plan and gives some pretty smart advice, like put cement and aggregate storage near the mixer. Makes sense. But maybe away from the road to keep dust down. Good point. General materials nearby with room to move them. Site office security near the gate to see who's coming and going. Standard practice, yeah. Control access. And things like toilets or the break room tucked away in a quieter corner for, you know, hygiene and safety. Definitely. A well-organized site isn't just efficient, it's much safer, too. Fewer hazards, less wasted time finding things. Precisely. Good flow, good conditions. And on safety, the source talks about hoarding, that temporary fence around the site. Ah, yes, the perimeter fencing. It gives two main benefits. One, keeps the site secure, stops people wandering in, stops theft. Very important. And two, protects the public keeps them out of a potentially dangerous area. So it's not just ugly, it's functional. Absolutely critical. It's a physical barrier, keeps everyone safe, workers inside, public outside, especially important near roads or walkways. The source really hammers this home with a scenario. Site next to a public road, there's an open well on site, and a bobcat zipping around. Ooh, that's a high-risk setup. It asks for six safety measures. Straight away, you think fence off that well. Immediately. Non-negotiable. And have clear traffic routes for that bobcat away from people. Yeah, traffic management is key. What else? Well, you'd need clear warning signs, right? For the public and the workers. Definitely. High V signs alerting everyone to the hazards, the, well, the machinery, the site entrance. And making sure everyone on site has their PPE personal protective equipment. Hard hats, boots, high V's vests. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Basic, but essential. Maybe designated safe walking paths inside the site. Good one. Keep pedestrians separate from moving equipment as much as possible. And just securing that whole site boundary properly, especially the side facing the road. Yes. Make sure that hoarding is solid and there are no gaps someone could slip through. Control the access points strictly. Okay. Now, we've used some specific terms here. Our source defines three key ones from site work. First, backfilling. Right. That's just putting soil back into a hole you dug, usually after you put something in it, like a pipe or around a foundation. Got it. Then earthing, that sounds electrical. It is. It's about safety, creating a connection from electrical systems down into the ground. So if there's a fault, the electricity goes safely into the earth instead of... Instead of through a person. Exactly. Deadly. Prevents electric shock. Crucial safety measure. And the third one, salvaging. That's basically recovering useful stuff from demolition or site clearing. Wood, metal, maybe bricks. So you can reuse or recycle them? Exactly. Less waste, maybe save some money on new materials. It's becoming much more common, which is good. It helps to know the lingo. Definitely. Clear communication relies on everyone understanding these basic terms. So last couple of points. Who's actually running the show here? The source mentions the building contractor. Yeah, the contractor is generally the one responsible for the whole thing. Yeah. Making sure it's built right, following plans, managing safety, hiring people. The main coordinator. Pretty much. They manage all the different trades and subcontractors. And who are those people on site? 
The source gives examples like general laborers. Yep, doing a lot of the physical work. Skilled tradespeople, carpenters, bricklayers, electricians, plumbers. The specialist. And site managers overseeing the day-to-day -day operations. Right, keeping everything on track. It's a real team effort. Lots of different skills needed. Okay, so we've really uh, dug into these first stages, haven't we? We have. From clearing the ground, picking the spot, laying out where things go, organizing it all, keeping it safe. It's clear that what looks like maybe the simple part is actually super systematic, needs a lot of planning, a lot of attention to detail. And it's worth remembering that these steps, the ones people might not even see in the finished building, they're absolutely vital. For what comes after? For the building's stability, its safety, how well it performs over decades, cutting corners here, that can lead to serious, long-lasting problems. So thinking about all that meticulous planning, that detail, yeah. just for these initial steps, what does that tell you, really, about how complex the whole construction process is yeah. and the level of expertise you actually need? It makes you appreciate. It's not just, you know, s sticking bricks together. It's this incredibly orchestrated process, starting quite literally from the ground up. Well said. And hopefully you listening now have a much clearer picture of just what goes into establishing that solid foundation.